So this is lesson two in the iOS learning path. Um, the previous lesson was an, a simple overview and explanation of what Xcode does and how it works. And this lesson is about iOS and what it does and a basic overview of how iOS works. So just like the previous lesson couldn't cover all of the details about Xcode because that would be impossible, this lesson won't cover all of the details about iOS because that would be impossible. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a step back and we're going to create an application using Xcode from scratch. And we're going to do that so that you can see how the process works. Um, and it would be similar to creating applications without buzz touch, but it is important to see um, how that works. And so our existing application that we downloaded from our control panel is here. And we're not going to use that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my desktop here. And I'm going to create a new folder on my desktop. And I'm doing this because I want to stay organized. And anytime you create any kind of a, any kind of a project, you're going to want to stay organized. So we'll call our um, new project Monterey Harbor, just like before. It's just an empty folder, so I'll open this. And in this folder, I'm going to create a subfolder called Images. And the reason I'm going to do that is as a developer, I want to always stay organized. So all of my images for this um, project that I'm going to do are going to live inside of the Images subdirectory. So as you can see, we have our boat icon. I'm going to move our boat icon into the images folder. And now what we have is an empty directory. And I just and all I did really was prepare a place um, to save this project we're going to make because, again, organization is really, really important. So I'm going to close Finder. And here's our folder. I'll move it over here just for fun. And now let's open Xcode. And let's file. Um, you can't see this, but I clicked the Xcode icon in my dock, and then I chose File, New, and I'm going to say Project. So this is what Xcode looks like when you create a new project. So I'm going to choose an empty application. This um, tutorial does not cover some of these Xcode templates that you can start from, um, because we don't think they serve a whole lot of use for people just getting started. So we're going to start with an empty application. I'm going to say Next. We're going to name our product Monterey Harbor, our application, just like before. And I'll say Next. It's going to ask me where I'd like to put it. And I'm going to save it in our Monterey Harbor folder that we created. So I'm going to say Create. And what we're going to have here is an empty Xcode project, or an empty iOS project, excuse me. And we can look at this empty Xcode project, iOS project, to see what um, was created for us. And so there are relatively, relatively few files um, in this project that was created when we, when we started this. Um, but all of these files are important. And a lot of these files are necessary to actually have a valid iOS app. And so all we're going to do, we're not going to change any of this code or anything like that. We're just, we're just starting from scratch. We're going to choose up in here in our drop-down list um, iPhone simulator and we're going to say run and what's going to happen is without making any adjustments or changing anything we have a valid um, iOS application and we're going to launch that application on the simulator so that we can see that it actually runs and works and and compiles and does everything that we, had ex we would expect it to do. Now interestingly I would expect this application to do nothing and that's an important concept we know that it does nothing because we didn't ask it to do anything. We said create a new blank app. And that's what we have, a blank app. And so I'm going to minimize Xcode a little bit. I'll make it a little smaller. And I will move this to the side. We'll move things around a little bit so we can see our simulator on the left and Xcode on the right. And this will become um, important in a moment. So we opened up a new blank project. We chose iPhone Simulator from the drop-down list, and we clicked Run, and this is what we got, an app that's blank. So let's fix two things before we um, continue our discussion, because it drives me crazy um, to have no icon and a, and a funky-looking title on our phone. So in order, in order to replace um, the icon, we're going to drag our boat image that we added to our project over the icon section here, app icon. So we'll drag boat. And in order to change the name under the icon, we need to go over here to the Info tab, and we need to change the Bundle Display Name. That's what shows underneath the icon. It defaults to the, to the product name, which we 
um, created when we started this project, Monterey Harbor. But because that that word is too long, iOS is truncating it, and we don't like that. So we're just going to change this to Harbor, and we're going to recompile this um, and re relaunch it on the iOS simulator so that we can keep talking about iOS. Um, so here's our application again running. It's still blank, only this time we have an icon and we've changed the name. So let's talk a little bit about how iOS is working. All we did is created a new blank project. We drag, we drug an image into that project, and then we set it as the icon. And then we also changed the bundle display name in the info tab of our of our build settings, um, or next to our build settings. It's a little bit different, but I consider all of this stuff build settings. But anyway, so this tutorial is about iOS. So let's get back to iOS. So iOS. Um, does a lot of different things for you that you don't necessarily think about. So for example, one thing that iOS does is it manages all of the applications on the device. So right here there's one, two, three, four, five applications and then six hours and then Safari down here. So there's seven applications on this device. So one of the things that iOS needs to do is it needs to manage what the applications are called, what icons they use, um, and all of that kind of stuff. So, so the operating system does that for us. The other thing the operating system needs to do is it needs to manage what applications are running. And so there's this concept of a running application, an application in the foreground, and then an application in the background. So right now, there is no application in the foreground. We're just looking at iOS's um, springboard is what this is called. But when we click our application, it becomes the application in the foreground. And we're all very used to this as iOS users, so these are in the background and ours is in the foreground. And so if we were to launch a different application, for example Safari, and then look at um, the background applications, you would see that our application has been pushed to the background. So the idea of applications being in the foreground and the background is pretty easy to understand. Another thing that iOS does that a lot of developers don't think about is manage all of the hardware on the device. For example, the compass, um, the GPS, um, the um, gyroscopic information when you're moving the phone around. There's a lot of different pieces of hardware on this device that we can take advantage of as developers. And iOS manages a lot of that for us so we don't have to do it. And so operating the list of applications, or managing the list of applications, managing the hardware, and managing what application is in the foreground and which applications are in the background is um, the fundamental idea behind iOS. It's the operating system on the device that manages all of this for us. So the last thing that we're going to talk about in this understanding iOS tutorial or lesson is this idea of events and event management. iOS as an operating system is an event driven operating system and what I mean by that is as far as the user is concerned Nothing's happening until the user takes an action or performs an event. So an example of that is a click. So if I click or a tap on this Safari icon, the event is trapped, iOS does that, and then launches the appropriate application. When I double click on the, the home button, the event was the, the double click. iOS traps that double click event and shows the, app, the icons running in the background. And so this idea of events is important because fundamentally in a mobile operating system nothing happens until the user does something. Of course there's things running in the background but generally speaking the user controls the entire experience. So when I'm in the photos application iOS launches the photos application but it doesn't do anything until the user um, performs an action. If I'm in the contacts application iOS doesn't do anything until the user performs an action. So when I click this plus button, iOS is going to capture that tap um, and then it's going to display us a new screen. So the developer who made this contacts application knows this and understands that based on these user interactions and user events, the developer can display new screens. And it's iOS for the most part that manages how that screen is displayed the operating system decides how it's displayed, but of course the developer can change some of the characteristics of that behavior. For example, when you hit the plus button, iOS tells the developer that there was a tap event, and then the developer decided that the display characteristics should slide up this new contact sheet. So 
the event is the important key here. When you're creating mobile applications, you're going to get very good at understanding when certain events occur and when the user interacts with the device. There are some events that, the, that happen when the user doesn't interact with the device that iOS tells us um, as developers that things happened. An example of that is when we tap the Safari icon to launch Safari, iOS is going to tell us as developers that your application just launched. And it's important for us to know as developers that our application just launched so that we can take an action. So event-driven um, operating systems are fundamental to mobile programming. And you'll get good at understanding these tap events and these shake events or gestures, um, you know, finding a GPS location, all of these kinds of things. And the iOS operating system is exceptional at um, helping us as, as developers take advantage of those different events. So to conclude this understanding iOS lesson, um, I think the easiest way to, to summarize everything that we just talked about is to just um, learn how to get our head around the idea that iOS controls the applications on the phone, which applications are running, which applications are in the background, and then alerts the developer of all of the events that the user is um, performing on the device so that the developer can then take an action. Fundamentally, that's all iOS is doing. It knows about the apps, it knows about the hardware, it knows about the user's interactions, and the developers do the rest. So until next time, um, good luck and good learning.